Okay, thank you for the presentations. Are very interesting jobs. And my question is about how relevant are income taxes to these countries? For example, in context of high informality, I don't know how much the countries they can uh, the share of the income taxes to the total revenues to these countries to do the relevance of this kind of taxation. This is just my my question. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentations. Uh, my question for Javier, um, I'm, I'm wondering uh, who are these people in the other group in your analysis? Uh, for example, can you observe if those people are, uh, they were in uh, different industries before and you track if they move, for example, from agriculture or from uh, wholesale to the other? Or, for example, those can be also people that were in the informality, because we know that, for example, in developing countries, some people choose to be in the informality sector um, for some many reasons. One of the reasons is not to, to pay taxes. Um, and what I'm thinking is a lot of people saw that uh, who are, were in the labor market and lost their jobs. Uh, they had some kind of social protection uh, support. And uh, I'm just wondering if uh, if can be some movement from the informality to the formality in low-pay jobs in the case of Ecuador. And for you, Yuka, uh, just um, can you observe some kind of uh, descriptive ev evidence of bunching uh, before this uh, tax rate? Because what I'm thinking is uh, what is the, the the role of uh, composition group in your control group? Uh, before and after the, the reform, if they changed behavior uh, because of uh, the change of the the, the 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 policy, basically. Thank you. Thank you. You you might regret that because I have one for each, but <laughs> but let me try really. Let me try really quickly. Um, so, for thank you for the great presentation. So, for, for Xavier, um, for Javier, the the question on um, my question is on, you know, you you had changes over time of these shares, and my question is whether your analysis is anonymous or non-anonymous. In the sense you said at the beginning, you were interested in these top share, these top people before the pandemic. So is it those people as they move, or is it you know the top one percent at each particular point? And it, this is related to Amina's uh, matrix, right? So I just wasn't sure. And then just to clarify, just to make sure I understood, there's no capital incomes, right, Xavier? Javier, in your analysis. Okay, for Amina, two quick things: um, the capital gains that you have are they just the realized ones, or is this an estimate of the of the of the full capital gains, including when there weren't sales. And then you mentioned that there wasn't work on merging the household surveys and tax data in South Africa. And, and I was wondering, I thought I knew that Ingrid Woolard had done something on that. So asking about, about that, whether I, I had dreamt that or not. <laughs> and then, uh, Marcus, so you, so you, you know, you, so you brought in the national accounts data to sort of have an estimate of income in the informal sector. And then you have your income data for the formal sector, and there's a big gap between that and its representation in the national account. So again, just a clarification question. So you did scale that up as well by the national accounts, the, 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 the formal part. So the informal part, I, I understood at least comes from the HFCE from the national accounts, and in the top part was there a national accounts adjustment. Uh, and for Yuka, uh, two very uh, quick quick questions. One is, um, you know, it, it, uh, nerdy identification police question would worry about your parallel trends assumption in the diff and diff as they diverged the year before the tax reform. So. The was drawn in the year after. Ah, it was drawn in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, maybe you want to redraw that line, but that's fine. <laughs> No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Then, if there isn't, I was just wondering whether the tax reform was anticipated or not. Um, but if if the if the line was not drawn at the tax reform, yeah, that's fine. And the second question to you was: um, so the interpretation of these elasticity, right? So you you mentioned um, uh, income shifting. 
So there's very different policy interpretations, I guess, or responses to the calculation of the elasticity. If it's if the behavioral response is primarily on, I don't know, labor supply or investment response, or whether it is hiding your income or or shifting it away or moving it outside the country or not reporting it. Um, and I, I mean, I guess it's impossible for you to tell, but I wonder if you had um, investigated that in any way. Thanks. Okay, thank you for the good question. So um, we'll go, I guess, in the same order. Would that be okay? So thanks a lot for the questions. Um, on the first question, I don't have the, the exact number for Ecuador, for but it's low. It's, it's, um, the tax uh, to GDP ratio is, is very small compared to, to developed countries. Uh, however, something interesting is that it is not only because of informal employment. So something that we have done with Ecuador is using micro simulation models is we have moved uh, artificially people who are uh, in informal employment in survey data to formal employment and recalculated for them social insurance contributions and personal income tax to see how much they would it, how much it would cost for them to move assuming they don't change uh, incomes okay something very something very easy and what we see is that actually personal income tax increases by very little by by 20% from from the revenue this means that it's not a problem of informality only it's a problem of the design of personal income tax as i was saying the the, the exempted tax, tax threshold is extremely high we are talking about people only in the 10th decile of the income distribution who 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 practically pay personal income tax in ecuador and you have this extremely generous deductions from personal expenditures so you know that make you fall out of the tax brackets so i think it is both and i think that's an interesting finding because it's not only about the labor market it's about policy design, okay? Um, Rodrigo, we can, the answer is we can, the, the follow-up of the answer is we haven't done it yet, but that's what we want to do. So, and this links to, to Chico's uh, question. So it's, uh, it's, it's anonymous in the sense that we are, at the moment, we, we just, especially for the top, we define it uh, in terms of uh, 2019, and for them, we do follow them. What's, what's going on, okay? So these, these are not top, uh, top incomes that change from year to year. So there, these are people that were in the top incomes in 2019, and then we see what, what happens to the earnings and, and, and uh, um, employment. But at the bottom is everyone, okay? So it's not, we are not fixing for those who were at the bottom in 2019. Uh, so there's lots of movements, and we haven't done yet, and, and this, done this yet, but I, I think this is the next step, because what we see, want to see is, is mobility. What's, what's going on in terms of mobility, you know? Uh, do people who are top earners in 2019 are they moving to the bottom or are they dropping out from from the data? So that's what that's what we want to get a, a better grasp of. Um, however, the main problem is that we can know what happened to these people only as long as they come back to the data. What do I mean? You have you have in 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 the register. If they go out, we don't know whether they became unemployed, whether they went moved to informal employment, whether they they died during the pandemic. It's impossible for us to know as uh, the only way we can know is they, if they come back. Okay. So what, you know, they, they, they went out and they came back. So we cannot do this, this mobility between formal and informal, but we can know what happened them, you know, in terms of exiting and, and coming back. And that's the next step that we want to take. Yeah. Thanks. Um, okay. So for the first question, and maybe one thing I didn't mention, and maybe it's kind of different from some of the other presentations is that uh, in the South African context, um, the information that we actually capture from the tax data, um, so you're looking at about almost 70% of your employed, so yeah, employees in the, in the country, right? so your, from your workforce, those who are employed, 70% of them are actually in the tax data. Informality is not as big, or the informal sector is not as big in South Africa in comparison to a lot of the other African countries. Um, so that's you know, maybe gives you some sense of that. Uh, capital gains realized, yes, that's what I understand um, that to be. Uh, so it's a Woolard and Basir paper that you're talking about. Um, yes, and so we follow closely the work that they do and sort of expands on that. Um, they don't quite merge the data, I think. Um, I think they use it as complementary um, because you can't actually put those two data sets together. It just identified in different ways different government departments that don't talk to each other. Um, but I, I mean, I think there would be a project to actually do something like that. I think it's entirely feasible um, and would be phenomenal. Yeah. Hi, thanks. I, I'll, 
I address the first question about how relevant taxes are. In some sense, I, I don't care all that much about taxes here. I'm using this as a, as a source for income distribution analysis. And, but of course, the fact that it covers such a tiny fraction of the population is, to put it mildly, a problem. But it's increasing very rapidly. Well, if 5% more of the population in a decade is rapid or not is, of course, a matter of opinion. But, but all the same, it's... Um, uh, the, there is somehow more to it. And in fact, somehow understanding the interaction, I think there's a political economy project here lurking around, kind of trying to figure out how formal, informal sector composition changes across time and whether or not things like tax policy actually have a role in that. But um, it should probably be done by somebody who knows how to do that rather than me. But, it, but it's increasing. That, that's uh, the, the short answer there. And on, on Chico's specific question, the... Um, I don't scale up the gross incomes uh, with GDP estimates of formal sector incomes, in part because what I didn't say, but of course is reasonably important, I Im ignore tax evasion here. And I mean, there are other differences between what GDP captures as, as formal sector income, uh, but, but tax evasion is one of them. There are other differences as well. So I, I only use the, the GDP estimates to get get essentially the, the, the control totals to uh, compare with. I, I focused on, on the average income here because the, that's kind of interesting substantively, but, but the control totals function here is to figure out what the, to, to get the quantile groupings right. And, and I don't do the rescaling, but I think that's because there are kind of other differences between the two. So it's, I don't think the right way to think of it is that, that, that the, the taxes, I mean, the tax evasion problem could be kind of taken uh, into account somehow doing this comparison, but there are other differences as well. All right. So, um, regarding the um, first, the, um, the importance of personal income tax as a, as a revenue generator. So, um, I checked numbers um, from another paper of mine, and, and, and for Uganda, uh, in 2019, it hovered around um, less than 2% of the GDP. Uh, so, so definitely, I mean, um, they rely way less um, on the sub-Saharan African countries than developed countries do on generating revenue from, from, from the income tax. Having said that, I mean, it's more than the, than, the, than, the, than the country gets from the corporate income tax. So, I mean, and then there's quite a bit of discussion on the, on the role of um, multi, multinationals income shifting, eroding the tax uh, uh, capacity. And, and, and the personal income tax, I think, is understudied in that respect. Um, and, and luckily, I mean, the, the revenue yields are increasing also in terms of, of, of as a share of GDP, not only in, in, as, a, as a number of, of taxpayers. Uh, Rodrigo, you asked about bunching. So yes, we did uh, check for bunching. There wasn't any clear bunching at the, at the threshold. So really, it appears that the, um, 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 uh, the, where the response comes from are from taxpayers who are far away from the, from the threshold uh, level. So they, they, are, they are above about the, uh, the uh, way about the, uh, the threshold level. And that's why bunching wouldn't actually then identify, I mean, the response on, on, on these people. I think you also asked about um, uh, potential uh, changes in the composition of the sample or the, or the, pop, or the, or the, or the people in the, in the, in the, in the uh, analysis that we cover. And that's a good question. That's a potential pitfall of the cross-sectional analysis and also something that science discusses, unfortunately, um, we don't have many other core areas to check because we're using the admin tax data and there's nothing on education, etc. We could do a little bit on, 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 on regions and industry of the employer. So that's, that's we could check. So that's a useful comment. Um, so, so the, and, and then finally, uh, uh, Chico, you ask about the, um, uh, the parallel trends. So the, so the figure was drawn so that the, pa uh, the, uh, the vertical line was for the first year of the reform. And then it was normalized for the for the, for the year before, uh, and then uh, two years after before the reform, there were no 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 differences across this group. So so maybe the figure was misleading, but that, that there's no no problem in in parallel trends. Um, uh, yes, that's an excellent point regarding then the um, uh, what are the tax policy implications of this. Um, so uh, unfortunately, I, I I don't think we can match. 
uh, uh, the income and the dividend recipients. So, so in a sense, to I mean, ideally, we would like to, in a sense, have a have a response of the, of the broad income of of, of these top earners, but we, we we are not able to match the um, um, uh, the um, uh, their dividend received, so any other incomes, and then the and then, then, then the labor earnings, uh, uh, to see how much the, the broad income covering all sorts of different tax heads uh, would 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 react. But the tax policy implications clearly are very different because if it's if it's only income shifting, then uh, then the uh, then, then then the formula that I showed you uh, for the revenue maximizing top tax rates is, is actually not valid. Uh, we do discuss this uh, a little bit in the paper, but we it's a little bit of a, a I mean, hand waving because we, we, there, there, are, there are limits on how much we can do actual analysis on that. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, are there any other questions, comments? We still have time, so yeah, please. So thank you, everyone. Um, Amina, right? Yeah, thank you. So uh, as Amina showed, there is of course like a differentiation of the sources of income, like between like a different uh, percentiles, uh, quantiles, like everything, right? So as you know from yesterday's talk, uh, we are in Colombia facing a change in the in the fiscal policy, and there is a lot of debate on. How do you tax uh, gains from capital, dividends, and so on? And today we have a lot of heterogeneity in that, like they are taxed uh, differently. So I just want to, to hear from you that are experts like in, in this, like how is this in your countries? How different is taxation to the different parts of income? And a bit related to the last presentation of elasticity, I was wondering if, yeah, like if there are different, and like in the baseline, we have different taxation. There is a reform, and then maybe these parts are taxed differently. And if eventually, like, I don't know, you have some experience and you know what happens, because I was wondering regarding the, the, the transition that Amina was showing, right? Maybe when you change this, there, is, there are people that are very managing firms. They are exposed to more taxes, then they need to change the source of income and maybe the transition just shift all the way around because, yeah, you are putting some people that know better to do some things to, to be better, like in, in the income and, and, and distribution. So, yeah, I just have that in my mind and I just want to hear from you what are your thoughts about, about this. Okay, thank you. I have a question on uh, the paper from a window. Uh, the drop in uh, earnings and employment, do we know the portion of that drop that can be attributed to the pandemic itself, like uh, COVID infections, and also attributable to government policies like uh, close on businesses? and also subsidies, support on uh, farms. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good question, um, and something maybe we need to think about a little bit more. It might be nice to add a slide to say, you know, this capital gains gets, uh, you know, has this tax rate, and the dividends has that tax rate, and labor income has this tax rate. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of the, the tax rate for the capital gains tax, but it is, it is all different, um, and then, yeah, Yuka, did you have some? I mean, I think we we we've had some small discussion about this. But I don't remember the rates. So the, yeah. So, so, so the so the, um, so the rates are different. So there's a flat tax on dividends. Twenty. Yeah. In, in yeah. South Africa, there's a flat tax, I believe, on capital gains. Can't remember now on top of my head what the rates are. Uh, so this is a very useful practice that uh, I mean. It's hard to levy a progressive tax on capital gains because then that, there would be timing response. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So, yes, the, the big drop in earnings and employment uh, during the second quarter of 2020 is due to the strict lockdown measures taken by the government. Um, this affected industries differently. As you saw in, in the graphic, there was a drop in all industries, but to different extents. Um, in agriculture, something that we found out is that 
um, there was a drop in earnings, uh, although you know this is a, this is considered uh, one of the activities that did not suffer or should not suffer much. So contrary to some studies that have assumed, and now we survey data doing some now casting that have assumed that agriculture did not suffer during the pandemic, we have evidence that it did. So both in terms of employment and uh, in, term, in terms of earnings. As I said, we don't have information about informal employment, but again, we, from, from survey data, we, we also saw a huge drop in employment, in informal employment and earnings uh, with the best we can do. Um, this is only, so what I presented is only uh, earnings from labor. There were some um, support policies uh, for people during the pandemic. I think this is also related to, to the question Rodrigo asked before, but we do not capture this, this here. Um, more, I mean, perhaps also because this went, these were targeted more to people in the lower part of the distribution. We think that maybe some some of these people might not have received those those uh, aids, and it's quite it would be quite hard to simulate. So we just focus on on personal income tax and social insurance contribution for that reason. Okay, so if I understood your question correctly, you asked, um, I mean. What are the lessons learned in terms of the responses by various groups of taxpayers? Was that something that you you wanted to know? And, and that's an excellent question. And, and what tax economists typically think that there's a sort of, sort of hierarchy of responses, and the um, and this sort of uh, reporting behavior, if you wish, that's avoidance evasion, is the one uh, which is the um, uh, in a sense the most responsive. And, and but that of course doesn't represent then the real response in terms of anything in terms. For, for, I mean, investment behavior, labor supply behavior, and such, and 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 and, and maybe the main lesson, in a sense, is that the, you you should fix the tax base first, yeah, so that the uh, it becomes harder to do um, evasion slash avoidance, and 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 then uh, 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 take it from there. Uh, but uh, uh, most of this evidence comes from developed countries, and. Um, uh, it's a it's a very rich research agenda, agenda to do all sort of this sort of um, granular level analysis for 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 developing countries. Uh, and I, I I think in the Latin American case you have um, rich data sets that you can you can utilize to do this sort of work. Okay, so we are unless there's a burning question, so we are then uh, uh, finishing a little bit early. Um, thank you so much uh, for for coming. Thank you for the for the excellent questions. Thank you, colleagues, for presentations.